Join me in our Easter greeting, which continues. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And our prelude reminded us of the good news of life that is worth living because of Jesus and the resurrection power that he has throughout creation. I give thanks to Jim for that piece and Tom Lafferty also will be leading us in our choir and music this morning. Dick Walker is going to be our liturgist who will help us to hear the word of God. Worship is all of our work that we bring our hearts together. And as we gather in worship, as we were introduced to the practice last week, as we gather in worship, we pause to acknowledge that this, we, the Snohomish United Methodist Church, acknowledge that this land on which we gather, this land on which we live, uh, that it was part, respectfully acknowledge that this land is part of the Snohomish tribes who have lived here for generations before us. And we remember that our ability to come and gather is connected to their loss. And so we pray that we might be in uh, respectful love and learning with all in this space and who have lived in these places. This morning, that was part of our theme as this morning. On this fourth Sunday of Easter, we will listen for how resurrection has power to transform community. We've talked a little bit about the good news of resurrection in our own lives. We've talked about it throughout the whole of creation. And this morning, we kind of meet in the middle. Where does resurrection live in community? And how does that transform our communities? I invite you to listen for that theme. There are two quick announcements that I want to highlight for you. Following our worship time today, we have our social justice book club discussion on the story of more. That'll be in the library. We'll have some time to get some food and fellowship and then gather in the library about 1130 to begin that discussion. I also want to point out that the office, uh, our administrator Lorraine is going to be away the second half of this week. So the office will be closed Thursday and Friday and probably Monday as well. I'm still available and around, but I may not be here with my meeting schedule, but you're still welcome to contact me in your usual ways. That doesn't mean I'm gone, but just a reminder that uh, the office will be closed if there's something you wanted to connect with the office about to do that earlier. But now let us join in our time of worship together. I invite you as always to worship in the way that is best for you to participate. And so for those who are able, let us rise in body and spirit for our call to worship together. Come and worship. We come together. We come from all that is weary and wonderful in our lives to share all that is weary and wonderful in our shared life together. Here we share one another's joys, lend one another strength, and participate in the sacred story of our faith. Thanks be to God the one one who shows us that we do not go it alone please remain standing and uh, join in our opening song christ is risen number 307 in the hymnal and on the screen let us sing together
Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, we, knew, we know you as holy, three in one. Your very essence is one of relationship. Your being points the way from our rugged individualism and invites us into shared life in community instead. Teach us the tenderness and humility, the compassion and care that it takes to live together as a community. We long to share life together well, for that is the life you have called us, us to. Meet us here and teach us your way. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time, would the children please come forward for their time together? Come on up. Oh, good. On your way. <coughs> All right. How are you today? Good? It's really nice to see you all. I'm going to sit a little over here. I have, I have a challenge for you, so you know what? We can leave your chairs right here, and we're going to stand up instead. So here's the challenge. I have a bowl of fruit snacks. Now, if you can reach them, you can have one if your parents say it's okay, you can eat them, or you're, who you're here with. If your grown-up says it's okay, you can eat it. But here's the thing, because, you know, you could probably just be like, I reached it. Hooray. All right. You have to keep one hand on the communion table, okay? Start here. One hand has to stay on the communion table. Got it? All right. You can reach them. You can have them. Go. You're trying. Are you going to reach it? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I know. There you go. Did that help? Hmm. All right, are there any other ideas? You have to have one hand on the communion table. Huh. Does anyone out here have any ideas? Oh, form a chain. What's your idea? Okay, so channel your, everyone channel your superhero strength. David's idea is to become like elastic people, ready? Uh, superhero strength, superhero stretchiness. All right. Deb had the idea that may, oh, and Mary and Annie are showing you, they had an idea that maybe you could form a chain because there only has to be one hand on the communion table. And right now you have three hands. Can you make a chain? You want to try? All right. Talk amongst yourselves. Figure it out. Who's going to go where? Hmm. Sasha, do you have an idea? No. All right. Okay. All right. Stretch out your arms. Are you okay with holding each other's hands to create a chain if it gets you fruit snacks? Okay. Dakota's okay with that. All right. Dakota, you keep your hand on the table. Sasha, hold Dakota's other hand and stretch as far as you possibly can. All right, Adam. Can we get there? Can you reach them yet? Can you bring the whole bowl to your friends? Aha! All right. You did it, and you can take a fruit snack, as promised, if you want one. You don't have to. It's part of the challenging game. All right. We're going to come back together. We can take a seat now, if you want. Come take a seat. At first, it seemed pretty impossible, didn't it? None of you had any of your elastic superhero powers today. I didn't either. And we re you reached as far as you could. But then when you came and worked together and created a chain, you could get there. 
And so today in church, we're talking about how um, we work together in faith. So when you come to church, you don't all come at a separate time, right? I'd be really, really have long Sundays if you all came at a separate time. Like if you all came for your own 20-minute worship service, back to back. But we don't. We come together, right? Look around. We all come together. Choir sings together. We sing our songs together. We pray together. We work in the world together. We do vacation Bible school together. We do a lot of things together. Fellowship and feed and community kitchen and God's garden. These are things we do together. And so it reminds us that when we are uh, learning about God, learning about Jesus, learning about love, we don't do that all by ourselves. We have people who can help us. And sometimes it is hard for us to remember how we can work together. Uh, sometimes we think about just how each of us can reach the fruit snacks, and then we can't go quite as far or it gets a harder challenge. But when we put our gifts together, then we can do amazing things. And so that's what I want you to remember, that we don't do it by ourselves, and it's really great that we get to use our gifts together. So what is something that you think you are really good at that would help someone else in the world? Is something that you think you're really good at that you can share with other people to make their day better or brighter or show love? Think about it. Get them started. You guys share some of your gifts. What are some things that you think are really great about you that you can share with the community? Or a passion you have. I know there are some gardeners. Quilting, yes. Quilting brings warmth, shares there have been prayer quilts that have been made. We have gardeners. Baking. Singing. Singing. Do any of you have any special gifts that you like? Talents? Say it again. You can sew. What, do you, what about you, Adam? You can talk? Oh, playing soccer. I'm sorry. Well, talking is all fine, too. Playing soccer? Yeah, you can bring some entertainment and play together, and you can practice teamwork there, can't you? Sasha, what about you? You don't know? Hmm. I have some ideas. Sometimes we can name gifts in each other when we know people well. Uh, you are a great singer and dancer. And you are also silly sometimes. That can cheer people up. So I give thanks for all the different gifts that we have and the ways we can see them in each other so that we can find ways to share them together. Will you say a prayer with me today? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for so many talents and interests and passions and skills that we have. All of these are gifts that we can share with each other to make your world a better, happier, more loving, and fair place. Help us to work together well. Amen. All right. Thanks, my friends. You can head off. You can stay in worship or head to Sunday school, and I will see you afterwards. <coughs>
Indeed, his name is wonderful. This morning's scripture gives us a glimpse into the life together in the early Christian communities. We notice that shared life is marked by humility, generosity, awe, and compassion. We hope to embody these same characteristics of Christian community today. Hear this reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having all the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. These are holy words for all God's people. Thanks be to God. So as I mentioned before, we're on our fourth Sunday of Easter. There will be seven before we get to Pentecost at the end of May in this 50-day season of celebrating the good news of Jesus' resurrection. And so for these Sundays, we're going to continue to look at how resurrection power intersects with our lives. So on Easter Sunday, we looked at how resurrection power brings new life, and it meets us individually in surprising ways. In ways when things that we thought would be the end of us, maybe God has a way of bringing forth new life in surprising places. And then we looked at how our response, a faithful response to resurrection, is one of joy, wonder, hope at what it is God can do. And last week we looked at how resurrection power intersects with the whole of creation. It's not just for us alone but is expansive, good news for the entire created order made by God's hand. And as I told you before, today we are looking at how resurrection meets us kind of in between those two, not just individually, not just this whole wide cosmos, all nations, but that in-between place, that complicated place where we live, where we work, where we have our being and play together, that place where we have to actually interact. We can't just think about people as theoretical all of humanity. And we can't just think only of ourselves, but that place where we actually bump up against each other. Those places where we share life together. And so this morning, our scripture invites us into exploring what does resurrection power look like for community? Our community, our neighborhoods, where we are right now. Our reading from Acts this morning, it's really a story that picks up right after Pentecost. It is a glimpse of the early Christian communities, how it is that they will live together. They shared meals together, they met together, they worshiped together, they prayed together. There were signs and awe and wonder. They shared possessions together so that everyone had enough. And day by day, God adds to their number those who are being saved. When we hear this description in the Easter season, this reminds me of what resurrection power can be to transform communities into places of mutual flourishing, where life is shared and abundant for all around us, not just some of us. Now, I don't know about you, but I have to admit that if I'm really, really honest, 
when I read this passage, I am at once completely longing for this beautiful, idyllic, almost utopian vision of community. And I am also a little bit like, how does that work? Because, uh, I mean, we've lived with people. We hear news stories. We know it is hard. How does that work? I had a moment this week. I was going somewhere new that I'd never been, and that always makes me a little anxious anyways. But it was somewhere on the edge of Machias, and as I pulled my car down this very long gravel driveway, not sure if it was the right road or not, when I got to the end of it and got to what I thought was the house, I had a moment where I remembered some of the horrifying news stories of the past weeks. And for a moment, I held my breath and said a prayer because I thought people have been shot for going to the wrong place, for ringing the wrong doorbell, for getting in the wrong car. I am not sure if I'm in the right place. And for a moment, I held my breath and I said a prayer and I double checked and I triple checked the address. And then I read the description, yellow house, yellow house. And finally, I got out of the car, and I did not release that breath until I got inside with that friendly, familiar face who ushered me in. And for a moment, I thought about how absurd it was that I needed to be afraid of such a thing. And I thought about this passage from Acts in this beautiful, idyllic community, and I wondered... I wondered how it was possible. I wondered what fears were in those spaces. And for a while, I thought to myself, you know, I wonder if the only way is to go home, look up some land in the middle of nowhere, gather my dearest and best who I can trust, and just move there and start all over. I wondered if that was the only way. And then I read this passage more, and I have to tell you that I finally realized the fatal flaw in my thinking when it comes to this description of community. This description of community, which can sometimes feel more than 2,000 years and half a world away from our current reality. I realized that in my fear, I read this passage only as an escape. In my fear, I thought only of self-preservation and creating an impervious fortress for me and my own somewhere. In my fear, I had assumed that it had to be a place apart from where I already live and move. And when I reread this passage from Acts, I realized that I had been dreaming a dream of fear. And this passage imagines a dream of resurrection. That is not a place apart. That was not the people fleeing and escaping and creating their impervious fortress, but was right where they were. This was not an escape from their communities. It was a radical transformation of their communities. That's what this passage dreams, imagines, gives us a glimpse of resurrection hope for communities where we are that can actually be transformed and not just left behind, but mended, reconciled, healed, where there is flourishing of life and enough for all people. In my fear, I wanted to divest from the place I lived to give myself to a new place. But we are Easter people, and we are resurrection people, and we are people of Easter's dream, and Easter's dream is one of radical investment in love where we are, which is hard in those places where we live and move and play and have our being. Because, dear church, I saw your heads nod when I told you about the fear I felt from the news stories. 
the absurdity of things that I need to be afraid of now. I know that you probably have seen the studies, too, about the epidemics of our nation, of our world. Loneliness is an epidemic. Anger, gun violence, many things in our world. We don't need the news stories. We look at our communities and how we know or no longer know our neighbors and neighborhoods. We can look at the deep divisions and know the mistrust that has taken root in our communities in our own lives. We can know how tempting it is in the midst of all of it to let fears, dreams run wild. It's tempting. It's tempting to want to just close the gates, man the watchtower, build the wall higher, add the barricades. Close in an impervious fortress of our own beloved. And that, my friends, I have realized is fear's dream. And we are Easter people. We are people of scriptures who again and again and again say, do not be afraid. Fear not. Not because it's easy to not be afraid, but because the good news we have seeks to cast out those fears. The closing up shop, turning inward, that's the disciples hiding away in fear. That's a Holy Saturday dream. That is a right after when we don't know what's happened dream. Resurrection breaks down the doors. The risen Christ crosses those barriers and comes and breathes upon the people and sets them free. And I am sure some of them were like, I'm happy here. Thanks, Jesus. Really glad you're back, but I still do like this room. And yet Jesus calls the people out out from the places where they are hiding, where they are seeking, where fear gets the final word. He shows them how resurrection living is a radical investment in love and new life right where we are. It's showing up to one another, breaking bread together, praising God together in worship. We practice that every week. But by no means does it only need to be a Christian practice. Any place where we share in joy and life and forgiveness and reconciliation and love, these are sacred practices that give praise to God. Resurrection is possible in communities and here and now, in all the places we encounter one another, in all the places that we bump up against one another. It's in awe, it is in wonder, it is in joy and generosity and glad hearts. It is in the willingness to lean in and listen, to linger, to be curious. To hold fear at bay just half a second longer to meet someone. As I've mentioned before, preached before, Our dream of resurrection and community is of a longer table and not a higher wall. That's what it means to be Easter people. It's sharing resources in a way that life can flourish. It's a lot like this book. We're going to read it later, or we've already read it or discuss it later. The story of more for our book club. The main message in it is that we already have enough if we learn how to share. Resurrection is not a story of self-sufficiency. It's a story of us learning. It's not a story of self-sufficiency where, I'm sorry to the camera, I'm moving, where one hand is here and we have to reach as far as we can and that's it. We can get anywhere here and that's it. Resurrection is a story not of self-sufficiency, but of hands linking arm in arm, hearts coming together to reach wider to bring signs of awe and wonder in our community farther and farther and farther. And so, my friends, 
This witness doesn't have to be 2,000 years and half a world away. It doesn't have to be confined to this community in Acts. It can begin right here. It can begin right now. And it begin, can begin with small, ordinary practices of community of investing in small groups. There are a few already in our congregation, and I think there are more underway. It's an invitation and saying yes to an invitation to show up to other folks to share life together. You can practice by showing up or inviting a neighbor for dinner. Or if that's too much, when you're walking, linger a little longer, even around folks you haven't met yet. You can practice community by being the first one to reach out and saying, I'm a little lonely, can we gather? Or reaching out, writing to someone who may be lonely. I know sometimes we frown at overstepping, inviting ourselves in. But my friends, sometimes when it comes to God's community and witnessing and love, we don't step far enough. And so my friends, (laughs) an invitation to maybe overstep a little in love. And you can practice showing up to community in these spaces, show up in city council meetings or book clubs or garden clubs or Snohomish for Equity. Show up to these spaces of community. It doesn't have to be something that adds work to your life. Community can be fun. Community can be like reaching for the fruit snacks. It can be joyful. It can be it can be parades and community events and farmers markets and where we gather as much to know one another as anything else. It might even be, now this is going to be the hard one, guys. It might even be after fell in fellowship time, sitting at a different table. Oh, I know. I sort of built you up. Invite a neighbor for dinner. Okay. Talk to someone else in church. No. I'm joking, we're good about that. But my friends, it doesn't need to be something groundbreaking that feels like it's going to solve all these big epidemics that leave us fearful and up at night. It begins in our practices of community and belovedness here, in our lives where we live now. I'm always struck that this passage from Acts, it ends with the declaration that God added to their number, day by day. And I'm always struck because this passage doesn't really tell us that they were what the people were reciting in their creeds or naming in their prayers. It doesn't tell us all of what they were. It showed us how they were living together. And that witness of how they were living together is what I believe (coughs) is what invited others to join in. Who wouldn't we want to be part of a group, a community, where life flourishes, where joy and generosity and goodwill lead the way where fear doesn't get the final say, where signs and wonders reach far and wide because of it. This, my friends, this is what resurrection and community looks like. It's the practices that help us to release our breath and knock on the door and look for a face that may become a familiar and friendly face to us. It can bind us together. So resurrection, power, and community, it frees us to live in another way, bound together by peace. One that brings us together in goodwill to the mutual flourishing of life. And so every week in Easter so far, the theme has been that I give you a challenge. So why stop now? Your challenge... This week, once we practiced joy, a reminder, we challenged to practice joy, a challenge to make a decision that was good for the earth. This week, a challenge to find one way, one way to create a new connection or deepen an existing connection in your community. Just one way. And practice it. My prayer, my friends, beloved in Christ, is that by God's grace, these one acts would create a chain that helps us to reach farther and farther in our community, 
that would lead to such a way of living that all would come upon all who see it that signs and wonders of God's grace and goodwill would be proclaimed everywhere we are. May it be so. Amen. This time I invite us into a song of response. Let us stand in body, rise in body or spirit as we sing together. Where charity and love prevail. It's the insert in your bulletin, where charity and love prevail. Thank you. seated. I was, I was really waiting for some reason. I thought the song ended with a sung amen, and so I kind of paused. So, amen. <laughs> My friends, because our faith is a shared journey, because we are people who witness to God's love in our community, not only in, in our own hearts, but out in the world around us, we are people who share our gifts with one another. And so as it is the time in our service where we receive our gifts and also share our prayers, our joys, concerns, those things which are on our hearts and in our lives this day. And so I would invite you as our ushers come forward to receive, to offer your gifts with gratitude, with glad hearts, generosity, gratitude. I put all those together and offer our prayers as well. Let us give and live together generously.
holy, gracious God, we give thanks to you. We give thanks to you, an infinite wisdom who showed us that uh, life did not need to be something that was alone, but as something that is shared. Throughout scriptures, you have called us into community. You yourself are a God three in one, showing us that to share our gifts and lives together is a true witness of love in the world. So pour out your blessing on these gifts that they would go to testify to hope and new life for our community. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Continue in a spirit of prayer. We receive these, the prayers of our community today. Bill and Glenda Clemens raise up a prayer. Catherine Palmeyer died on Friday in Kodiak, Alaska. And her service will, she'll have a graveside service this Friday, May 5th at 1 p.m. at Woodlawn Cemetery in Snohomish. We remember Catherine, we remember our friend Max as well, who went before her, and all who are grieving. Lord, in your mercy. And we would raise up our brother in Christ, Dick Yost, who will be having a procedure this week uh, to remove breast cancer that was found incidentally from another scan. We pray for that procedure and for your healing on the other side. Lord, in your mercy. <laughs> Dear God, we come and we sing Alleluia. That is the refrain of this Easter season. A word, a song, a testimony of joy. And yet, Lord, today you remind us that our joy doesn't only live in our own bodies, but is shared throughout community. That to give praise to your name is more than the words that cross our lips and that are the prayers of our hearts, but are the ways in which we show up to one another in love and tenderness and compassion and humility and care in seeking justice. All the ways that we seek to live together so that all might flourish. These are the ways in which we witness to you and give praise back to you God. We admit that sometimes the sensational news stories and the horror of man's inhumanity to man can overwhelm us. We can look out on the brokenness and the division of our world and of nations, and sometimes we might think it is too big to do anything than to seek to escape. Create our own small space where life might flourish. But you remind us, God, by resurrection, A, that your power is more mighty than we could ever imagine, that it can mend and bring new life and reconcile where we have hardly begun to dream it possible. But you also remind us that we are witnesses of that, that we are not people of fear, we are people of joy, we are people of hope, and joy and hope, they draw us in to one another. So that we would remember that our small actions of love to a neighbor, they are not insignificant. Though they may feel at times like a small thing, a drop in the bucket in the face of so many ills in the world around us, they matter all the more. We don't solve loneliness any other way than by gathering together. And that begins with one another, with us. 
anger can't be solved apart from each other, but invites us into compassion. So teach us ways that we might listen, teach us ways we might linger, teach us ways we might even dare to overstep what is polite to bring forth loving kindness for those around us. Help us draw our courage from you. And so, Lord, we are bold still to pray for nations divided that you would bring peace. We are bold to pray for the whole of our creation, which groans under the weight of human need. We're bold to pray that you can yet teach us ways of enough and satisfaction. We are bold to pray for communities divided, that there might be peace which prevails. We are bold to remember that even in our own lives, disagreement does not need to be the end of relationship, does not need to be that which severs all community. But indeed, your peace and your love prevail, your resurrection life are possible and sustain us and dare us to dream new dreams, not of fear, but of Easter hope. And so, Lord, we pray, too, for those who are on our hearts and minds this day, those names we've already lifted before you, those that are echoing in our hearts. Surround, surround those folks with your care and your strength. All this we pray in the name of Christ our Lord, remembering that he taught us to pray together. He taught us a prayer we cannot possibly pray without remembering one another because we never pray to my Father alone, but to our Father. And so, Lord, together we pray now with many voices and whatever words, language, we know it best, the same prayer to you, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen I invite you again into a song that we sing together. Let us rise in body or spirit and sing in the midst of new dimensions. Number 2238 in the faith we sing and on the screen.
friends, the whole song is a benediction for us. We, your people, ours the journey, now and ever, now and ever, now and ever more. So my friends, let us go in love and compassion to build community all around us, now and ever, now and ever, now and evermore. Let us go in peace. Amen.